Hi guys. It is a chilly fall day here on the Rock in South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Saturday, October 27th, 2012 as a species. Uh, today's rant is something I, I don't talk about much for the reason I don't know much about it and that is so oh, to oversimplify it is the uh, is, is, is about machines about all of these gadgets that are ramping up on this planet uh, as the technological revolution goes into complete Orwellian overdrive uh, good lord you know uh, it, it is not hard to sit here when you study this stuff, which I don't do very much. It, uh, if you just start to scratch the surface of what is going on, on in all of these Weisenheimer brains, these mad scientists out there on this planet, it's not hard to sound like Alex Jones. You know? Uh, the the kernel of truth in the middle of, of Alex Jones's fear mongering about the eugenicist and the transhumanist and, and, and all of this shit, you know, which I usually just toss out, you know, when you, when you start studying it, you know, it, it's, it, it's too easy to fall into the, uh, in, into the Alex Jones fear mongering trap. Uh, I guess the I, I, I waded into this subject. I was in one of my rants a few days ago about uh, about how to bring down industrial civilization. Some somebody wrote in one of my tribes members wrote in about the subject of singularity. So I went and said, okay, let's find out what I, I've heard the term before. It vaguely has something to do, I think, with the Venus Project and uh, somehow it, it, something to do with how technology is going to save ourselves from ourselves. And uh, in, in my research on that, I stumbled on, uh, on one documentary which led me to another. Now, guys, before you get your hopes up, I, I, after watching the documentary about singularity, I have, I have no further clue what singularity is now than before I started watching it, but I, but I learned a lot of other things that I thought were interesting, so I want to pass these on to you. It's actually two different documentaries that I watched last night, both of them YouTubes that came to my attention through one of my favorite websites that I have, topdocumentaryfilms.com. How many times do I need to recommend topdocumentaryfilms.com and documentaryjungle.com? So anyway, uh, I'm just going to read you the j just the brief descriptions of these of these two videos which very much meld together and I'm putting I put them on my favorites and I'm putting links to them and I highly recommend that you watch them the first one is a one hour documentary called the age of transitions the age of transitions is a documentary about converging technology transhumanism artificial intelligence, life extension, brain implants, social science, propaganda, nanotechnology, eugenics, geopolitics, world revolution, and more, including singularity. It delves into how Darwinism has been used as a tool of eugenics promotion through social Darwinism and subtle indoctrination. The cutting-edge group known as transhumanists see a beautiful future brought about by artificial intelligence, life extension, and cybernetics. But what one must realize before getting carried away with such utopian dreams 
is that transhumanism was born out of the elitist pseudoscience called eugenics. This documentary provides vital information on the history of eugenics and its new cutting edge transformation. And I will uh, get, get back to this uh, documentary in a minute, but I want to go ahead as long as I have this computer open here so I can just set it aside. And this ties in very well with a, another YouTube uh, brought to my attention from top documentary films. And this is a half hour documentary called Rise of the Machines. And the, the machine that they're talking about the rise of in this case is, is drones, is pilotless aircraft. I've had, I've had rants before on drones, but th this sheds a new light on them. Uh, okay, rise of the machines. Most people see drones as a controversial weapon prowling over foreign battlegrounds. But as America's military campaigns wind down, I love that, America's military campaigns winding down. I'm going to rephrase that. But as America's military campaigns ramp up more than ever, uh, using drones more than ever, these machines are coming home to, to the U.S and are set to change our civilian lives forever. Quote, this is a powerful technology. No amount of hand wringing is going to stop it, says drone expert Peter Singer. So whether it's a floating TV station streaming live to the web, the prying lens of the paparazzi, the police chasing a criminal or a government agency spying on us, small domestic drones are experiencing an exponential growth in this country and on this planet. As the world's largest drone convention in Las, in Las Vegas, a salesman tells the crowd, quote, this can be used in law enforcement, disaster relief, and industrial applications. And as the technology advances at a frightening speed, anyone with a few hundred dollars can buy their own drone over the counter. And they're talking about today, so uh, th there's a whole lot of information in this, in this hour and a half uh, of YouTube that I, uh, th that, good God, I I any one of these subjects could launch into hours and hours, and I, and I can certainly only barely touch upon them in this rant. And so this is kind of a, 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 a rant about the, these tech, these literally game-changing technologies uh, from someone uh, from, from a Luddite, uh, you know, technophobe, generally speaking, and uh, good Lord, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I could veer off on 20 different rants. Let, let's just try to cut to the bottom lines of this. And guys, I want to say that, that in all of this 90 minutes, uh, you know, with some discussion of robotics, obviously, nowhere was it mentioned. What I see is one of the biggest game changers on this planet from all these robots, and that's the, uh, that's the industrial output factor where more and more workers, particularly assembly line workers, are being replaced by robots and the and the growth curve here is absolutely meteoric uh, as the price per unit comes down and down and down on these individual robots you better be damn sure 
uh, that uh, that these giant multinational corporations that in, that employ a, probably billions of people on this planet, especially over there in China, but right here in the United States too. And don't think for a minute it ain't happening on the few industrial uh, assembly line jobs in the U.S. that these workers are being replaced by robots or drones, whatever you want to call them. And uh, the effect on, on, on this planet that this is going to have by just uh, kicking the, these millions, if not billions, of little human robots back into the slums where they came from to fend for themselves where they're not even going to be earning two dollars a day anymore. Uh, this is the, uh, this is what I consider one of the many elephants in the living room. There's a whole herd of elephants in the living room about all of these just completely mind-numbing uh, technologies that are that uh, that are being unleashed onto this planet and into this society, and how we're going to respond to it. Now, of course, nowhere in this 90 minutes did it was it ever mentioned. You know what I'm usually ranting about is is about the ongoing collapse. Of this, uh, of this planet, uh, of this global ecosystem, uh, this utopian future that these technophiles uh, envision is set against a backdrop of, uh, of spiraling out of control ecological collapse. Uh, and, and it's being completely ignored so that is the uh, that is the elephant in the living room of these of these utopian technophiles is 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 this backdrop uh, of what is going on on this planet and, uh, and so I'm just going to throw out a few doomsday prophet of uh, environmental alarmist downfall of civilization predictions about where all this is going. Okay, uh, probably my overriding one is, I, I'm, I'm sorry I can't remember this fellow's name, Jerry, might be Randers, but I'm afraid I have him mixed up with someone else. But anyway, I've mentioned his book, uh, which I also can't remember the name of, uh, on other rants. Uh, well, anyway, this fellow's central thesis in uh, this doomsday prophet, environmental alarmist, whose name I can't remember, his central thesis in, in his own uh, rants is that every, every single technological advance, meaning, and I use the, put the word advance in, in quotes here, uh, for humanity, uh, that supposedly is supposed to serve humanity, makes it that more efficient for the planet eaters to destroy this planet. That's where the technology is going to, that's what it's, the, the vast majority of it, the, the, the small percentage of all of these little techno gizmos from drones to, to brain implants are uh, the, the tiny little bit of benefit this planet might, the planet saving benefit is, is going to be grossly outweighed by, the, uh, by adapting these technologies to eating this planet. Now most of them come from the military, so you got the thing that, that a lot of this, uh, a, a particularly the, the front loading of it, as we see in these drone attacks over there in Pakistan, is this technology is going to be used directly to kill people. That's, that's his number one purpose. 
and, uh, and, and, and as it migrates, as so much technology has and does and will continue to do from military applications to domestic applications, the, uh, you know, right here to where just an average Joe can right now go buy a drone for a few hundred dollars or build your own one for even less than that, uh, you, you better believe the, the net result of all of this is going to be continuing assaults against this planet. Meaning, number one, the vast majority of human beings uh, who will never have access to this technology, mainly due to the fact uh, that this technology is, 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 you better believe, the main people benefiting it are, are the one percenters. Who are uh, who are going to benefit economically and financially are going to be you know the the higher up the economic food chain you are are the only ones. Gee, how have you heard this story? Who are going to see the benefits? The people who are going to take it in the shorts are the vast majority of this planet's human population, who will never have access to it. And uh, when we get into the planet's non-human population, uh, the, the, our fellow Earthlings, they're really going to take it in the short and curlies. That is, that is the, the, the major uh, effect of all this. You know, I just mentioned about, uh, about the effects of all of this technology actually re replacing human laborers. You know, they actually, you know, one of the, one of the scenes they mention in this, in, you know, in this action-packed hour documentary, they're talking about, I think they're called cyborgs, where it gets so weird where, where the, the, the line between physical humans and robots is getting, uh, is getting uh, more and more blurry with each passing day and that is, that I don't know whether a cyborg is a human or a robot it's, it's literally going we're going to start introducing nanotechnology into our own DNA Jesus Christ this is great and, and, and so what do they show these cyborgs doing they show them cutting down trees and busting up rocks working for multinational lumber companies, paper companies, and mining interest. You know, that's where, uh, this is where it's going, and, you know, and, and, it, and it showed right here in this thing, in, in these cute little cartoons about how great cyborgs are. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so the rich are going to continue to get richer off of this shit and the poor are going to continue to get poorer uh, whether it goes into uh, you know into the fear mongering overdrive you know that, that Alex Jones talks about his new world order depopulation agenda uh, uh, all I see I see a hell of a lot more evidence in uh, in, in in this uh, in in these documentaries, but at least the uh, the, the the transhumanist one uh, that if anything, it's going to not counting the drones that actually kill people. You know, there's plenty of this stuff that is only going to, con you know, to continue uh, to, to ramp up population on this planet. Certainly, the population of the uh, of the of the one percent, the tiny few, who are going to be able to afford this uh, th this technology. Okay, but guys, you know. <clears throat> So you, we can sit here and, and be like Alex Jones and, and fear monger, and we can sit here and boohoo about how bad these drones are for us, but you know, I, I, I agree, all, you can do that all you want, but these drones are here to stay, at least until th this industrial civilization collapses. And so guys, 
we, we can either sit here and, and play the little victim mode, or we can start figuring out how to use this technology to bring down the, uh, the very civil industrial civilization that spawned it. And I'm hoping uh, that, uh, that some of this shit could be spawning the seeds of, of its own destruction. Now, I realize that this is a, a, a violation, I think, of, of Albert Einstein's rule that you can't fix a problem. You can't solve a problem by using the same methods that caused the problems in the first place. But guys, you know, they're kind of leaving us no choice. And so getting back to this drones when uh, it, uh, it, it certainly gave, gave me some ideas. Uh, you know, and, and, and it featured these guys, this is these average guys who built this little bitty ass thing. There's a couple of 20 somethings who are out there that they, they built this little thing and they, and they show it flying and it flies right up to the Statue of Liberty. I mean, it could have parked right on the torch of the Statue of Liberty. And then it shows these pictures of this, of this little gizmo flying all around the Golden Gate Bridge and San Francisco flies over. Then it goes underneath the bridge. And you understand that the, the, the guy can be, he said he, he could be 10 miles away sitting here with his laptop and sending this little drone uh, well, it parked right on the girders of the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, if it can park on the top of the torch of, uh, uh, of the Statue of Liberty or the girders of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, these little gizmos can certainly park anywhere in between New York City and, uh, and, and San Francisco, and there's you know, Derek Jensen, like wondering how can we start taking out these cell phone towers one at a time? Well, these cell phone towers are a hell of a lot smaller than the Golden Gate Bridge, and they're a hell of a lot smaller than the Statue of Liberty, and, uh, you know, it, it depends on what these drones are carrying with them. Now they're they're already talking about that they've developed today. There is what's essentially it's about the size they said of a rolled up newspaper. This this is a short range cruise missile. The thing weighs about five pounds. It doesn't say what these things cost, but the, the you guys don't think for one minute they, these things average people can today can build these little five pound cruise missiles to, uh, to, you know, to hit a target. I'm sure there's plenty of people who would like to send one of these little cruise missiles to knock my hippie ass off this rock. Okay, and, and, and it, the technology is there for someone to knock me off this rock with a five pound uh, drone cruise missile. Now, of course, it does blow up. It does destroy the, the drone, so I don't know how much these things cost. Uh, but you better believe the price is coming down. So if, 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 if I wanted to take out a cell phone tower and uh, was figuring out a way to do it uh, to greatly reduce my chances of being arrested, I might investigate these a little a little more or let's say I wanted to take out a a bulldozer uh, in the Amazon jungle oh uh, I bet one of these little things could do it uh, if Y'all probably, you know, if I wanted to start taking out dams, I know that Derek Jensen, my hero Derek Jensen, he's a big fan of taking out dams. So am I. Uh, I'm not sure a five pound uh, drone cruise missile that, that some 20 something technocrat 
could uh, could develop, could help me uh, out in this case, but but maybe a 10 pound one could. Could put a big ass hole, could start chipping away at these dams, these cell phone towers, these bulldozers, these pipelines, these uh, oil wells that are, that are under construction. Uh, you know, I have no doubt that they could that they, they could probably sink these whaling ships from Japan and uh, in Norway. Now, guys, I, I fully realize that the other side that that it would be it probably be easier for the Japanese whaling fleet to take out the Sea Shepherds or uh, or Greenpeace's anti-whaling ships and vice versa because it's uh, it's always easier for the big guys to take out the little guys but, but there will be some victories and uh, and of course you know the the first time that uh, some uh, in, in eco-nazi takes out a uh, takes out a bulldozer or a whaling ship or a cell phone tower or an oil well with one of these little five to ten pound drones that they uh, paid a few hundred dollars for they will be branded as terrorists I, I, I love it uh, you better believe that the whalers and the oil drillers and the dam builders will will brand uh, what I call the eco warriors as, as terrorists, guys. It is 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 gonna is interesting times on the planet. It is damn interesting times on the planet. So if 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 if, if your interest is bringing down industrial civilization, uh, this this is one case. If you can't beat them. Join them. So let's join them. Uh, am I going to be buying a drone and uh, and and blowing up bulldozers in the Amazon jungle? Obviously, guys, no. Uh, I I am way too much of a of a troglodyte of a technological troglodyte to ever figure out how and I'm either too broke or too cheap depending on your uh, so, so there's no danger uh, of this loudmouth hippie from a rock uh, in South Austin Texas ever uh, ever using a drone to take out a bulldozer but you better believe the first time I hear, and it will happen, and the first time I hear about someone else taking out a bulldozer with a drone, hallelujah, hallelujah, bring on the eco drones. And uh, with that, I guess I will wrap up this, this rant uh, and, and urge you to watch these, uh, to watch both these documentaries and make up your own mind about the, the worthy applications of all of this new technology that is unfolding on this planet. And I'm going to get up off this rock and go to a four-year-old's birthday party. There you go, hand my little tail off to a four-year-old's birthday party. And with that, I will say bye, guys.